You want a spot? Yeah. Cher is a prominent world pop star with a unique voice, who is also an actress, a writer, a director, an entrepreneur, and simply a gorgeous woman. The American bombshell of Armenian descent has won the hearts not only of music lovers around the world, but also those of picky critics who shower her with awards. Join us on a spectacular journey through the life of this icon. Cher how the pop icon lives, and how she spends her millions. Sherilyn Sarkeesian was born in California on May 20, 1946, to Karapet Sarkeesian, a truck driver who changed his name to John, and Georgia Holt, a no-name actress of Cherokee and French ancestry. Before the little girl turned one, her parents filed for divorce. Her mother was so busy with fixing her love life that she barely spent time with her daughter. As for the girl's biological father, she met him only when she was 11. Cher has a stepsister named Georgian, Georgia's daughter from her second marriage. Sherilyn had some issues growing up. She was dyslexic, very shy, and struggled with negative body image. She had jet black hair, brown eyes, a prominent nose, and small teeth. As the family could barely make ends meet, and with the coming of the little sister, things got even worse. Sherilyn couldn't afford decent clothes. Things started to look up for her family financially after her mother got married for the fourth time to Gilbert Lapier, a VP of a local bank. He adopted Cher and George Ann under his last name and helped them get into Montclair College Preparatory School, a school mainly for kids from rich families. Even though Cher upgraded her wardrobe, she still wasn't happy with her looks. Back at the time, Americans believed that a curvy, blue-eyed blonde was the embodiment of beauty and perfection which made the young girl desperate. Audrey Hepburn was the only ray of hope for the girl, as the actress also didn't comply with the beauty standards, and yet the world still adored her. Sherilyn worshipped Audrey, and she got so inspired that she started coming up with an exquisite signature to give autographs to her fans. For some reason, she had a firm belief that she'd be a world-class star. The future star wasn't an A student. She messed around and stood up to her classmates who were always picking on her. One time, she had to spend a night at a police station after she was seen driving a car that wasn't hers. However, there was nothing illegal about it. The car belonged to Sherilyn's friend, who just left her in the car alone for a tad too long. Cher still has the mugshot from that day, where she's smiling like a true criminal. Going to the movies and raving at rock festivals were her favorite ways to enjoy herself back in the day. She ended up dropping out of school. It was no surprise that when she was 16, she packed her stuff and moved to LA with one goal in mind, to conquer Hollywood. The first thing she did when she got there was sign up for acting classes. Sherilyn went to auditions and danced in clubs to support herself and pay for classes. This is when she got a surprise from the universe. She met the assistant of the famous producer, Phil Spector. His name was Sonny Bono, and it didn't take him long to offer the girl to come live with him under one condition. She had to keep his place clean and cook him hearty meals. Sherilyn couldn't confess to her mother that she was living with a man, so for some time, she referred to Sonny as her girlfriend. At first, Cher was just helping around the house, but eventually, Sonny spotted her musicality, beautiful contralto voice, and artistic talent, so he decided to introduce her to his boss. Phil liked the girl and offered her a background singer job at once. She was featured on many songs that blew up. Her first solo single, titled Ringo I Love You, was released under the stage name Bonnie Jo Mason. All radio stations refused to air the song as they believed it was performed by a man who wanted to confess his love to the Beatles drummer for some reason. Ringo, I love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, it hurt the feelings of the rising singer. Meanwhile, Sonny and Sherilyn's relationship slowly shifted from platonic to romantic. They tied the knot pretty soon at a very low-key ceremony in their own bathroom. The couple exchanged vows and rings from a souvenir shop. On top of that, they realized that they could work together, so they embarked on their own journey. The shabby, long-haired hippie and the bold beauty decided to name their duo Caesar and Cleo, alluding to the historical characters, but in September 1964, they dropped the idea and kept their real names. 
the duo Sonny and Cher got to work. A year later, they released their first album, Look At Us, which had an astounding effect. The song, I Got You Babe, was chosen as the lead single, which topped all the charts on both sides of the Atlantic. I got you, babe. 20 years later, Rolling Stone listed the single among the 500 greatest songs of all time. In 2008, the song was added to the Grammy Hall of Fame. The song was an inseparable part of the 1993 movie Groundhog Day and a symbol of this cinematic masterpiece. In 1965, Cher released her debut solo album titled All I Really Want To Do, which was a success in the US. All I really wanna do. In 1966, the duo presented their second album, The Wondrous World of Sonny and Cher. It consisted mainly of covers, and it didn't gain as much recognition as their first work. After that, Sonny produced other Cher albums, including the controversial The Sunny Side of Cher and more commercially successful ones Cher and With Love Cher. Apart from that, the couple released their third studio album, In Case You're In Love. It was also a cover collection, with the single Little Man achieving the most success and topping five European charts. At your face. In 1968, Cher released her next solo album titled Backstage, which was a total flop. The album 3614 Jackson Highway also failed, and the duo decided to focus on the movie industry. Prior to that, in 1967, the artist starred in an episode of the TV show The Man From UNCLE. Then, she had big roles in several movies, and in 1969, Sonny decided to spawn to the drama Chastity and give Cher the leading role. The motion picture made no impact whatsoever, but brought a beautiful surprise. Our hero got pregnant. The couple welcomed a baby girl in March 1969 and named her Chastity son Bono after the movie. In the early 1970s, Sonny and Cher found themselves in huge debt. They had to come up with something fast, so the couple decided to start their own TV show. The Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour got a warm welcome from the audience, and soon they started booking celebrities for their show, such as David Bowie, Ronald Reagan, and Michael Jackson. For three years, more than 30 million viewers tuned into the show weekly, winning it a Golden Globe. Although it seemed that everything went smoothly, the couple was coping with a serious issue behind the scenes. Cher was juggling being a mother and working 24-7, while Sonny preferred to spend his time with younger women. Nevertheless, they managed to release one more album titled All I Ever Need Is You, which received golden certification, having sold more than 500,000 copies. As for Cher's 1971 solo work, Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves, the name comes from the title and the most popular song, Sonny didn't produce it. This solo album brought the singer recognition from both critics and audiences. A year later, Cher released her eighth album titled Foxy Lady, which once again was warmly received. Her next works were Bittersweet White Light and Half Breed. The first album is considered to be her best work vocal-wise, but it wasn't commercially successful. The latter album got a mixed reaction from critics. In 1973, Sonny and Cher released one more studio album together named Mama Was a Rock and Roll Singer, Papa Used to Write All Her Songs. The album reached only number 132 on the Billboard chart. In 1974, Cher presented her own album, Dark Lady, which was followed by her divorce from Sonny. The couple managed to patch their relationship over time and kept on working together on their TV show, but eventually Cher decided to pursue a solo career. The biggest failure during that time was the cover album, Stars, released under the Warner Records label. David Geffen, Cher's boyfriend at the time, helped her sign a $2.5 million deal. He also helped the singer end her contract with Sonny Bono, under which she was to work only for Cher Enterprises, a company run solely by her ex-husband. Cher and David didn't work out, but she kept exclusive rights for the album. In 1975, the singer got married for the second time to rock star Greg Allman. They had a son, Elijah, and released an album together, but it wasn't a smooth sailing. Greg was an addict and refused any help from his wife. The only thing Cher could do was file for a divorce, which was finalized in 1979. Work seemed to have reached a standstill as well. Two new albums, I'd Rather Believe in You and Cherish, failed and didn't make it to the charts. Still, nothing could stop Cher on her way to the top, so she released her 15th studio album titled Take Me Home, with the title single of the same name. The album skyrocketed to the top. 
haters claimed it was because of the extravagant cover on which Cher posed wearing nothing but Viking armor. To nail down her success, the singer started to put together her own Las Vegas residence. This is where she met the famous director Francis Ford Coppola, who was so smitten with her energy and dramatic talent that he urged her to do acting immediately. Cher wasn't afraid to follow the advice after the failure of her husband's movie, and once again, she got a lucky ticket. In the early 80s, she moved to New York and got a role in the Broadway musical Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, which later got a film adaptation. The actress was nominated for Golden Globe Awards for the supporting role. During that time, she also released three albums, Prisoner, Black Rose, and I Paralyze. The works weren't commercially successful despite being promoted and having half-naked Cher on the cover. After releasing I Paralyzed, the singer remembered the words of the legendary Coppola and made an official statement that she put her music career on pause to focus on acting. In 1983, Cher appeared on screen with Meryl Streep and Kurt Russell in the drama Silkwood. The guy that wrote it from the New York Times. Well, if you're going to be in the newspaper, then I want to be in there too. She received an additional $150,000, an Oscar nomination, a BAFTA award, and a Golden Globe for the role of Dolly Pelliker. Two years later, the actress starred in the biographical drama film Mask, which told the story of a teen with a rare genetic disorder. Cher portrayed the boy's mother, a badass hippie biker. Hi, I'm here to uh, register my son for the ninth grade. Well, uh, Mrs. No, 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 Mrs. I'm Rusty Dennis. This is my son, Rocky. Please sit down. She had a hard time on set, and there even was an ongoing conflict as the actress demanded that the director star her boyfriend at the time, Val Kilmer, but she never got her way. Still, the motion picture made a positive impression and gave our hero an opportunity to slay on the red carpets of the most prestigious film awards events. She won an award for Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival. She also received Golden Globe Awards and BAFTA nominations. Her salary also grew, reaching $500,000. Cher won the Sacred Oscar, a Golden Globe, and got a BAFTA nomination for the role of Loretta Castorini in the 1987 movie Moonstruck. She earned $1 million for the role. A person can, can see what they've messed up in their life, and they can change the way they do things, and they could even change their luck. So maybe, maybe my nature does draw me to you. That don't mean I have to go with it. She arrived at the ceremony wearing a stunning see-through dress that instantly became iconic. One more interesting fact about Moonstruck, Cher insisted that the young Nicolas Cage co-star with her. In the same year, the viewers got to witness the actress in the thriller Suspect and in the comedy fantasy movie The Witches of Eastwick. You're hurting people, Daryl. That stuff you did for us, it was great, but you can't use your power to hurt people. Don't you understand that? She got $2 million for both projects. This is when Cher decided to resume her singing career after the hiatus. Having achieved head-spinning success in the movie industry, she expected to come back with a bang. And come back she did. Her new album, Cher, got great reviews from listeners and critics. The songs I Found Someone and We All Sleep Alone, co-written by John Bon Jovi, were their favorites. We all sleep alone. Two years later, the singer released her 20th album titled Heart of Stone, which she supported with a huge tour. Wish your heart was a heart of stone. In 1990, Cher starred in one more movie, the comedy Mermaids. The atmosphere on set was heated because the actress's finicky nature and desire to implement her own vision of the project. She made the crew change the director and the actress who was supposed to play her character's daughter. The role ended up going to Winona Ryder, while Emily Lloyd, who was sore about leaving the project, went to court to get substantial compensation from the film company. However, it didn't tell on Cher's salary, and she got $4 million for the movie. Ooh, we're gonna play my favorite game, who's the worst mother in the world? Ooh, now don't tell me, let me guess, who could it be? Could it be me? In 1991, the singer released the album titled Love Hurts, which didn't create much resonance and impress critics. Still, the tour in support of the album was grandiose. After that, Cher went back to working on new music and acting. She made two cameos in the thriller The Player and the dramedy Preta Forte. 
In 1996, Cher played the leading role in the drama Faithful, but the project wasn't very successful. With a budget of $13 million, it grossed only $2 million. The next year, the singer presented her new album titled It's a Man's World. In 1996, she made her directorial debut with the drama If These Walls Could Talk. He knows when I get nervous. It's okay, honey. It's, you know, it's so normal. It's perfectly normal, really. Okay. And if one of us has to be nervous, better you than me, right? <laughs> she also starred in the movie and was nominated for a Golden Globe for the project. 1998 was an earth-shattering year in Cher's life. On January 5, she found out that her first husband, Sonny Bono, died while on a skiing trip in California. The two of them were still very close, and the news destroyed the singer. Cher admitted that she missed Sonny so much that she went to mediums to talk to him. Her producers insisted that she start working on a new album, which became a true masterpiece. The album, titled Believe, a concoction of Eurodance, techno and house, and Latina genres, received a Grammy nomination and became a fan favorite for years to come. Do you believe in love love? As for Cher herself, none of it made her happy. She suffered from severe depression and got back to work only in 1999 when she performed the national anthem at the Super Bowl and appeared in the war dramedy Tea with Mussolini. To keep her mind occupied, she started working on her memoir titled The First Time, released the album Not.com.Mercial, and went on a two-year tour. In the summer of 2001, she recorded a touching and dramatic song called Fuchsia Pois, featuring the Italian singer Eros Ramazzotti. They also shot a music video for the song. It was extremely popular with listeners, while critics proclaimed it a masterpiece. In the same year, Cher released her 25th studio album titled Living Proof, which served as a message. Cher finally came back to life. The record became the leader in sales in the UK and US. After that, the singer went on an extensive hiatus, but she was still touring during that time. From 2002 to 2005, Cher went on a farewell tour around the world. She played 325 shows grossing over $250 million. In the following years, Cher had her own Las Vegas concert residency at the famous Caesars Palace Hotel. In 2010, she starred in the musical Burlesque. The actress came up with her own costumes, and her song, You Haven't Seen the Last of Me, received a Golden Globe Awards nomination for Best Original Song. You haven't seen the last of me. Meanwhile, she got unexpected news. Her daughter Chastity came out as trans and changed her name to Chaz. As a mother, she found it hard to accept her child's choice, but she overcame herself. Later in the interviews, she shared that she's happy when her children are happy, no matter which path they choose. By the way, her son Elijah became a musician and artist. The only regret the singer has is that she spent little time with her kids while they were little. In 2011, she voiced the lioness in the family comedy movie Zookeeper. In 2013, she released the album Closer to the Truth, which debuted at number 3 on the Billboard chart. This is a woman's world, a truth. In 2018, the artist appeared in the musical Mamma Mia! Here We Go Again with a box office gross of almost $400 million. Let the party commence! Grandma, you weren't invited. That's the best kind of party, little girl. Did you know that she was offered a role in the first movie, but she turned it down? As for the sequel, she agreed to join the project only because of her old friend and ex-agent, Ron Meyer. He basically left her no choice when he told her over the phone, you're doing Mamma Mia 2, and hung up on her. After that, the singer went on another tour and released the album Dancing Queen. In 2021, she voiced a character in the animated TV show Scooby-Doo and Guess Who? and she's not going to stop. She's currently working on the drama Hail Mary and the horror movie Little Bites, which she's going to produce and star her son Chaz Bono in. This year, the artist also released her first-ever holiday season album titled Christmas. This was the first album featuring original songs in 10 years. On top of that, in 2023, the star launched her own ice cream line, which she named Sherlato. People will be able to get some gelato on the streets of Los Angeles from bright ice cream trucks with the singer's portraits on them. Looking at Cher's stunning body, you could never tell that she has a sweet tooth. 
However, she owes it not only to the genes of her mother, who was married six times and looked great until she passed away in 2022. Cher's secret to looking this good is also plastic surgery. She's had more than 20 beauty procedures to maintain a youthful appearance. She had some work done on her nose, face shape, and waist. She removed two ribs to be leaner. Cher had her first surgery at 28. It was a nose job to make it smaller. It took three procedures to achieve the desired effect, but it was only the beginning of her plastic surgery journey. Experts state that her signature high cheekbones were also created by a skillful surgeon. Apart from that, Cher is known for getting beauty injections. For instance, she went to the celebrity beautician Arnold Klein. He allegedly prescribed his other client, Michael Jackson, hard drugs, which could probably worsen his drug addiction. The doctor worked with thousands of patients, including Elizabeth Taylor, Sharon Stone, and Dustin Hoffman. Cher gifted her luxurious black Bentley Continental to Klein. In 2012, Arnie faced some financial problems and went bankrupt later. The public doesn't know the exact price of the car, but it was supposed to be sold for between $80,000 and $100,000. Cher still knows how to tease and surprise the audience. For example, while accepting her Billboard Icon Award in 2017, she shared that at 71, she could hold a plank for five minutes. She still wears sheer outfits, and in 2022, she walked the runway in a black latex bodysuit. By the way, apparently Tom Cruise, Tommy Lee, and Eric Clapton fell under Cher's spell at some point. People also add delivery guy Rob Camaletti to her list of admirers. They dated for three years in the 80s, but the guy couldn't cope with the intense attention and broke up with Cher. Some sources state that the actress fell in love again and got married in 2012. Her partner was either a cool biker or a TV host who was 25 years younger. However, there was never an official statement about it or any wedding pictures. In December 2022, there was a rumor that producer Alexander Edwards proposed to her. The two met during the Paris Fashion Week and were first spotted holding hands in Los Angeles on November 2nd of the same year. The 40-year age gap isn't the most troubling thing for the singer's close circle. They're worried because the allegations his ex-wife Amber Rose set against him. She accused him of repeated cheating and called him a gold digger. As for Cher's net worth, it reportedly sits at $360 million, making her one of the highest paid celebrities in the world. Apart from music, producing, and acting, she does private investing. The information about it leaked after the big scandal involving the pharmaceutical company Altor. Cher might have lost a significant amount of money after selling their shares. Luckily, it was the only time the singer got into trouble like this. She knows how to make money not only from her music, but also from promising ad campaigns. She partnered up with such brands as Gap and Marc Jacobs. Fun fact, in the 70s, Bob Mackie created a Barbie collection inspired by Cher's stage outfits. The dolls were so popular that at some point, people bought them more eagerly than the famous Barbie dolls. You can find dolls from the collection even now on marketplaces, but they're rather pricey. Of course, Cher can afford some chic property items. In the 70s, she lived in Beverly Hills and shared that the gorgeous mansion was the only house she was emotionally attached to. After that, she and Sonny lived in an Italian Renaissance estate. In 1989, she bought land in Malibu for $2.95 million. Construction took five years, but the result is absolutely astonishing. She teamed up with her friend and interior designer Ron Wilson to fuse elements of the Renaissance, Venice, and Versace. The three-floor mansion of 1,600 square feet is furnished with expensive marble, brass detailing, and ancient tapestry. There's a tropical garden and a swimming pool on site. The six-bedroom house with seven bathrooms lacks modern features like home theater, karaoke, or a record studio. When it comes to houses, Cher is rather conservative. The star regularly sells and purchases property. She owned an LA apartment for 10 years, which she later sold for $1 million. She profited $3 million from selling her house in Miami Beach. She then bought another mansion in Beverly Hills for $2,145,000, which she later sold for a bit less, $2,073,000. Apart from that, she had a small house with a beautiful view of the ocean on the East Coast, not far from Miami. Cher's car collection does her star income justice. Apart from the Bentley that she gave to her beautician, she was seen driving a gorgeous black Porsche in September 2021. There was a funny story connected with peculiar Mustang convertibles that Sonny and Cher got in 1996. The famous customizer George Barris created cars in gold and pink for the famous eccentric couple. In 2008, 
someone tracked down the vehicles, repaired them, and put them up for sale. In the 70s, the singer drove around in a Ferrari Dino 246 GT. Cher is known for being a philanthropist. She doesn't turn her back on people's problems and pain. The singer strives to help children and the elderly and protect animals. One time, she saw in the news that a Kenyan school was about to be closed. It was the only place where local children could get some food. Together with Clint Eastwood, Cher bought a piece of land where a new school was built so that children could get education and eat for free. In 1993, the singer made her first humanitarian trip to Armenia. She went there by plane carrying almost 100,000 pounds of medication, sweets, toys, and books worth $4 million. In her father's homeland, she met students and sick children. One of the main reasons for coming to the country was Kristina Agabakova, a child with cerebral palsy. Cher brought her papers for receiving treatment in Los Angeles. Cher shared that she was incredibly happy to see people who looked like her on the streets of Armenia. For the first time in her life, she connected to her Armenian roots. Cher sent an official request to Washington asking the U.S. to contribute to de-escalation of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. She spoke up on the war in Ukraine, condemning Russia's aggression. The singer stated that she'd give shelter to refugees in her own house and surround them with love and care. Cher is a true trailblazer in the art world. She's one of a few singers whose songs made it to the Billboard Hot 100 chart for decades straight. There's even a musical based on the star's life that features her iconic tracks. What is your favorite Cher song or role? I have to get home. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.